be available tomorrow, but after, after tomorrow, I will be in the state of Maine on a moose safari, which means you won't be able to get a hold of me, and I'll probably die from the black flies, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but I will be um, out of town next week. Pastor uh, Carl Proska is going to be doing service next Sunday. There is no service Saturday, which brings me to another, another topic. I'm very happy to say that the uh, KLS group yesterday has donated $800 to have us do, be able to have music on s Saturday nights. So I'm going to be bringing back Saturday night worship at 5 o'clock. We've been doing it at 2 as a recording, but we'll be looking at doing music. I haven't, we haven't got that incorporated yet. Well, we'll do it during the uh, communion Saturday. So stay tuned for that. But I'm really uh, overjoyed and blessed that we have such a great organization as our our KLS group, um, and I'm glad that they were able to help us out uh, in helping us to try to revitalize and try to bring back Saturday night service and as well as Sunday. So we have a lot of things going on that we're doing to bring the church and to grow with it. Um, we're working on um, a Sunday school program that we'll have ready in place when we need it and doing some things with the school as well. Um, one of the things that I've been doing, if you guys want to pull this out before we start, it's called the Divine Service, an explanation. Uh, they're in your pews. And each week I want to go over one segment of the, um, why we do what we do up here. Why do we do a Divine Service uh, and we follow the liturgy? It's really important because it is Jesus that is in the middle of our actions, our words, and our emotions during the service that we bring home with us. So I'm starting the, the first one, which is the pre-service music. And it says in there, this is a good time to review the readings of the day and reflect upon your relationship with God and others. Separate yourself from the clutter of everyday life and focus on God with a prayer. And sample, there's also a pre-service prayer, which I don't know if you guys read it, but sometimes we skip over it, but it's called As We Gather. Uh, there's insightful information in there from Scripture. It gives us a heart to start worship together. So each week I'll be going over these as we go forward, but just to give you a little appreciation for what we do up here and what we do together with our music and our worship and on, on Communion Sundays as well. So with those announcements made, I'd like to start our service off. Um, our opening hymn is hymn number 484, Make Songs of Joy. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Give us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. For his sake, he has given, forgiven you all of your sins. As a called and commissioned servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We continue on with the service of the Word. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth, and it stands fast. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace for the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Lord. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration grant that we may think those things that are right and by your merciful guiding accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the Old Testament reading. Today's Old Testament reading comes from Psalm 31, verses 14 through 24. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. <clears throat> Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face to shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. O Lord, let me not be put to shame, for I call upon you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go silently to Sheol. Let the lying lips be mute, which speak insolently against the righteous in pride and contempt. Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and worked for those who take refuge in you. 
in the sight of the children of mankind. In the cover of your presence, you hide them from the plots of men. You store them in the shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me. When I was in a besieged city, I said in my alarm, I am cut off from your sight. But you heard the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cried to you for help. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who will wait for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gradual is adapted from Matthew 28, Hebrews 2, and Psalm 8. We will speak it together. Christ Christ is risen risen from from the the dead. dead. God God the Father Father has has crowned him him with glory and honor. honor. He has given given him dominion dominion over the the works of his hands. hands. He has put put all things things under his feet. The epistle comes from Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all those, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body. And be thankful. The word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country, to a town in Judea. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she explained, exclaimed in a loud cry, Blessed are you among woman, women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to me, my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believes that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He who has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty with their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with those good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. He has spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her three months and returned to her home. This is the gospel of the Lord. The hymn of the day is hymn number 725, Children of the Heavenly Father. You may be seated. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. This morning, we're taking a uh, slight detour from our lessons 
to talk about Mother's Day. I use Colossians 3, 12 through 13 in the epistle. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has in a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, you, so you should also must forgive. Paul is talking about the example of Jesus Christ in our lives. And this morning, I could not help but think about mothers and moms, my own mom. And the words that came out, I'd like to use to describe a mother. The words to describe a mother and the actions towards her family, the compassion, the kindness, the humility, the meekness, and most importantly, the patience. Amen to that. Because my mom had a lot of patience with me. Compassion. A deep love and devotion for her family. Kindness. And every effort towards her children. And her devotion to them at all times. And in the worst of times and the best of times. During their sicknesses their fears, their failures, their wandering, their sadness, and a mom's forgiveness. All the attributes that we would love to have, and it exemplifies our Savior, Jesus Christ. For these things are what a child needs to grow and nurture. A family unit, a father and a mother. God designed a family unit with the love of the mom and the love of the dad for their children. For the children to realize who Jesus Christ is is through the examples of mom and dad, of the extraordinary gifts that are given, the extraordinary amount of different things that are given to the children at the cost of the parents. Humility. To let her family come before her own needs, her own desires, her own rest, and her own peace. She will continue to the bedside of a sick child. To the phone call from a daughter who's in college and extremely homesick. To the sicknesses that come upon in childhood, she is always there. Her kindness and her humility show, and the children learn. Meekness. At times, letting her husband have the way, even though she knows it's wrong. And to let him and her talk about those things without the children around. Patience. And this one is a really tough for so many people because patience comes with the love that you have. As God has patience for us, so does them. Our moms have patience for their children. And this is the hardest. It shows the strength and the wisdom of a, of a mom to understand the, the children's disappointments, but also how to deal out punishment. The mixture of both patience to teach And for the children to be corrected, to know what is right and what is wrong. And that is missing in today's society from the top levels down. Colossians 3, 14 to 15 says this as well. And above all these things put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in his one body. And to be thankful. One body is a family unit. One body devoted to teaching what Christ is, and that is love. This is what society is missing today, is the family unit to teach what is right, what is wrong, what is truth, and what is false. A mother's love 
is one emotion we will never, ever forget as long as we live. From the first moment that we opened our eyes and saw this person cuddling us, cradling us, making us feel protected and loved, that warm touch from mom at that very first instant, and for the first time when we say mommy, to the last goodbye for now on this earth when we deal with our parents' death. Jesus in his divine wisdom has given and designed the family. The family, a mother and a father, and the family unit is bonded together. It is what this country needs. It's what our cities need. It is what we need. We had Cameron Ministry come in yesterday morning at the brunch for the women's group, and I was struck by the 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 sure poverty and what's going on in our city of Rochester. The drug deals going down right by the right by the playground. The lawlessness that happens. These children that she's described to us as just longing for love from a family. Love from a mom and a dad. And Jesus is there in the middle even when Things aren't right. And there isn't a perfect family. Don't get me wrong. All families have struggles. We have struggles. But whether it is a single mom or a single dad, God is still in the middle of that union with the child. It is called L-O-V-E. It's called love. Love that mom has for her children and the love that mom has for her husband and her husband for her Colossians goes on to say this, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Those attributes seem rare today. They seem to be an attribute that few try to strive for because it has become self. It's what I want. It's what I believe I don't care who God says that I am. Our love comes and has come from the love of a mother. Talk a little bit about my mom. My mom's name was Anita. She was born to Italian immigrants from Umbria. It was a small region north of Rome. My grandpa and grandma came from simple farmers in Napa Valley, or in the Napa region. But my grandma and uncles worked in the coal mines of northeastern Pennsylvania in a town outside of Scranton called Jessup. I remember it well. I remember that she had to quit school at the sixth grade to take care of her sisters and brothers. She met my dad also a coal miner, who was just out of high school. And my mom and dad moved from Scranton to an area just north there called Binghamton. My mom was the best cook, the best baker, and the best housekeeper I can remember. And that's the memories I have of the summers being home and her bringing all my friends. And I thought I had a lot of friends because I was popular. It was her Italian cooking. They were always there. I was wondering why they kept asking if I could come for lunch. I said, sure. And my mom loved to serve lunch to my friends. I learned a lot from my mom and my dad. They weren't perfect people. They struggled, but they always had the faith of Jesus Christ. We were in church every Sunday, and I remember the devotion that my parents had to the church and to the people, and to Jesus Christ. This was the foundation that I found. This is the foundation that I had of a relationship, and it started back with Jesus Christ. A mother's love for me, and a mother's love for you all. As Mary pondered in her heart all these things that the Holy Spirit had filled her with, 
the overjoying of this teenage girl who accepted with the first call the Holy Spirit's need for her. Her panic when she lost her little boy and only to find her sitting with the rabbis learning. Her pride was swelled when her son, first miracle at the wedding, turning water into wine. And the deep anguish and deep sorrow of the death of her son, watching her own son become part of a cross, being crucified and nailed, speared with a Roman spear by the side and pronounced dead. Something every mother would never, ever even dream of for their children. She saw it all. She loved and she knew that there was more to this story. And there was. He rose three days later. He has risen. He has risen for us. And today, when we go home, remember your moms, present and past, the memories that you, that you have of them. And if you're lucky to have your mom with you here, please let her know how much you love her, as I love my mom. He has risen. He has risen indeed. And, and we are his. Amen. Please rise as we recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he arose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. And he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all the people according to their needs. O oh Lord, you bless and protect your people in a world where many false gods, known and unknown, are worshipped. Give your saints a clear and bold proclamation of Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son suffered on our behalf to win salvation for us. Grant that we may have the privilege not only of believing in him, but also of suffering for his sake. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of heaven and earth, you have given the spirit of truth to dwell in us through the holy baptism. Grant your spirit's steadfast guidance that the feet of his congregation and its, both in its fellowship may not slip into sin and unbelief, but will always in praise of you before the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Creator, you made from one man all the nations of the earth, and still you sustain us. Grant good leaders to, in every land who will seek peace and serve justice. Frustrate the causes of evil, violence, and oppression. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, you have given us a mirror of your love in the vocation of mothers who nurture, guide, and raise their children in all good things. Bless them in their calling. Sustain them through weary and difficult times. Remember in compassion all who bear and who are bringing them through the comfort, through the children of your church. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you promised not to abandon us in our need, nor leave us as orphans. Send forth your spirit and work through us. Your people that the lonely and the poor and the homeless, the sick, the suffering, the children who need love, rejoice 
all that your presence will be with them and the power will be with them through your love. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the salvation and the life you've given us through Jesus Christ. You do not leave your people or as orphans, but strengthen and guide them with the body and blood of your Son. Help us to receive what you offer here for us for good in this Holy Communion, that may, we may strengthen our faith and equip us for your service. Lord, and your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the offering. The Lord has given us a beautiful prayer. Let us pray it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, from all come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Our closing hymn is hymn number 866, Lord Jesus Christ, the friend, children's friend, verses 1 through 4. Hallelujah. Go in peace, serve the Lord.